So in this conservative take, I'm gonna be a little bit more serious in tone and nature because this is gonna cover Naomi Osaka, the tennis star who was embroiled in controversy from the very beginning after she won the US Open against Serena Williams. Now, she got kicked out of the Olympics in the third round and she's super woke, so we gotta talk about it here in this channel, but I'm gonna be sensitive on what's going on with her mental health. But I'm gonna walk you through my mindset as to tell you why I feel that being woke can not only cause problems on the sporting field, but it can also cause problems in mental health and also allows you to be manipulated by other people. And we're talking about that right now. My name is Kyle and welcome to the channel. This is The Conservative Take. This is your first time here because we have some people who have come on for the first time. Thank you for coming on board. We take pop culture and politics and we filter it through the lens of conservatism. In other words, we filter it right. And if that's something that you'd like to be part of, then by all means, please share with your friends and again, like and subscribe on this channel. So this video is gonna be primarily on Naomi Osaka. She's a tennis star. She is an awesome player. And full disclosure, I was absolutely a fan. I was pulling for her against Serena Williams when she beat her at the US Open. We'll get to that in a second. And I love tennis in general. I love women's tennis. I go all the way back to Steffi Graf. I go back to Tracy Austin. So just to give you an idea, I follow it for decades and I love the sport. I think right now on the court, it's actually the best it's ever been on the women's game. That being said, Naomi Osaka has been eliminated from the third round of the Olympics in Japan, her home country. And why are we talking about this? Because she's super duper woke. And I didn't realize how woke she was before I did the video on this to determine if I should even talk about this. But oh yeah, she's as bad as LeBron James, if not worse in some ways, at least in her stances. So I'll get to that in a second. So let's first talk about the elephant in the room. Let's talk about her mental health condition. I'm not a doctor. I'm not trying to make any kind of claim here whatsoever, but I don't want it to come across that I'm being insensitive in any shape, form or fashion on her because you have to take care of your mental health. It's incredibly important. But at the same time, being woke and having a woke mentality, especially dealing with issues that are untrue, particularly police brutality, we'll get to that in a second as well, can cause more harm than good. And Piers Morgan, who I'm not a huge fan of, went after her in May of this year. Let's dive into this. Piers Morgan has accused Naomi Osaka of cynical exploitation, writing after her sister said the tennis aces confidence had been shattered in a deleted post a day before her departure from the French Open. So she dropped out of several tournaments, the Italian Open, I believe, and also the French Open, and she attributed to mental health. And the argument was on her side was that she couldn't deal with the stress from the reporters. And the argument on the other side, on Pierce Morgan, that look, that's your job. You need to do that. You're making millions of dollars. So what's the deal? And that's his argument. Now, I'm not going to go through this whole article because it's pretty lengthy and it's not clearly the focus of this particular video. I just want to point out that I want to be sensitive to the possibility of her mental health condition and that being woke and being manipulated can do nothing worse than make it worse if it is there to begin with. What's interesting here is this comment here that I took a look at and I had to consider it as a possibility. It says here that Osaka was bullied by Serena Williams to the point he felt the need to apologize to the crowd for her magnificent victory over one of tennis great players. Now what this poster is referring to is back in September of 2018, US Open, Naomi Osaka against Serena Williams in the finals and Osaka won. I watched this match. Now I'll break it down basically essentially that Serena Williams coach was cheating. He even admitted it. Okay. And they were deducted points, I believe. And Serena Williams goes off, makes a huge distraction. It's a really crazy, eerie, awkward moment. And Osaka had looked up to this person. I think she considered Serena one of her heroes. And it was just a terrible moment. So Osaka beat her in a very brilliant match, by the way. 
And I think Serena Williams stole her thunder. I really do. I think it was a horrible display on Serena Williams' part. So I don't know. Let me know what you think about that. What do you think about Pierce Morgan and his comments there? Were they too harsh? Were they insensitive? Was he right about the fact that, hey, you know, it's your job to do what you need to do? Or are you more leaning to Osaka? Look, take care of yourself. Do you. Don't worry about everything else. Your health is the most important thing. I tend to lean in that direction, but I want to hear your opinion as well on this. But one thing we can definitely agree on without question is that Naomi Osaka is woke. And I didn't realize how bad it was, but let's take a look at a couple things here. This is from RT.com. By showcasing their wokeness and pandering to Naomi Osaka's one woman strike, tennis bosses have set a dangerous precedent. Now, what this is going on here, this is dealing with Jacob Blake and her protesting that and her dropping out of the tournament for a day and having the tennis coalition pander to her and bend over backwards and accommodate her and her whims of this particular incident. That's here. Desperate to display their woke credentials, tennis bosses at the Western and Southern Open in the U.S. have set a dangerous, if altogether predictable, precedent by pandering to social justice whims of Naomi Osaka. Again, that's really important, okay? Social justice is a ridiculous notion in and of itself. Anytime you have to qualify anything like justice means it's not justice, okay? It's something different. Social justice, if, if I were to define it and I have on this channel, is essentially putting people into groups and telling those people that those groups have rights that are arbitrated by a superior group that determines where everyone sits along the rankings. It constantly moves. And your person, your existence as an individual has no part in it. Your rights only come from the group that someone puts you in. That is social justice. It's ridiculous. And we have other videos. I'll leave links below on that. On that. But that is just a recipe for disaster. The two-time Grand Slam winner had earlier withdrawn from the tournament at the show of solidarity with the protests that followed the police shooting of African-American man Jacob Blake in Kenosha, Wisconsin. This, of course, is the same Jacob Blake who was accused of domestic sexual assault. <laughs> I'm sorry, he actually pled guilty to sexual assault to avoid a trial. In the shooting that happened there, I'm not going to get into any of that, but according to the DCI report, Blake told the officers that he had a knife in the car. So I'll leave all that right there. You can read up more on that the whole case, and what's not being told in the media, but you get where I'm saying here. And Naomi goes on to say this. She says, before I'm an athlete, I'm a black woman. As a black woman, I feel as though there are much more important matters at hand that need immediate attention rather than watching me play tennis. She goes on to say here, and it gets much worse. Watching the continued genocide of black people at the hand of police is making me sick to my stomach. Okay, if you want to talk genocide, I have other things we can talk about that I'm not going to say that's going to get this video demonetized. But police officers, come on, really? The statistics just do not add up on that. We did a video a while back called Why Cops Are Not The Problem in 60 Seconds. It's a follow-up video to a bigger one we did, which basically goes through all the crime stats for the most part of police and why the media is lying about police. And we do this a lot, but check out this video. If you go to theconservativetake.com, go out there or our YouTube channel, you'll see it there as well. And see, those are the facts that the media seems to ignore. And obviously the Tennis Association did the same thing. And so they felt back into a corner. And so they went through all these hoops to accommodate her wokeness based on a false premise and false narrative. And I can only imagine how this pandering is affecting her emotionally and maybe even giving her justification for continuing on with her actions. She says, I pulled out of the tournament yesterday in support of racial injustice and continued police violence. I was and am ready and prepared to concede the match to my opponent, said the former number one. See, Osaka isn't just your average tennis player. He was a former number one player and two-time major champion. And so lastly on this article, I'm going to bring up this point here. This, this author here, this is from RT.com, makes up a really, really good point here. It says that many fellow players no doubt supported Osaka. But what of those with other social justice causes to champion? If, for example, Novak Djokovic 
wanted to draw attention to the treatment of the Serbs in Kosovo, or a Muslim player wanted to protest the treatment of the Uyghurs in China. So that's a good point. Remember, the social justice, everyone's in their own separate box, and you can only have rights based on whoever told you what box you should be in and what point in time right now you are in the stepladder of the oppression Olympics. That is it's the most crazy, ridiculous thing I've ever seen in my life, but it allows people to be manipulated by power structures and so forth. And that is what I think Osaka is tied up into. And people like her with huge voices, with huge channels, with huge presence, with huge platforms like LeBron James spew this stuff out there. It's not true, but people believe it and then they act on it. And that's why when a police officer pulls someone over, they're nervous. Now, what was maybe fantasy now becomes reality because they're acting on a false narrative. That's why this is so dangerous. That's why I speak out on it as much as possible. And that's why this conservative take ties directly into wokeness as well as her losing the championship. And also she lectured us on kneeling to show support for anti-racism. This is back in July. This right here is from Newsbusters and they make out a really good point here. It says here that her mental depression is unfortunate. But we don't rely on ridiculously rich woke athletes for advice on how to comport ourselves during public events where we carry on time honored traditions to respect our freedom and the people who sacrificed their life and limb in defense of liberty. Well stated. Osaka who advocated for Black Lives Matter through her wearing of seven face masks Got a picture of it right here. Article right here. Oh, gosh, this is. Bearing the names of victims of police shootings during the 2020 U.S. Open. This is what Osaka wrote. She said, lesson one, you can never please everyone. The world is divided now as I can remember in my 23 short years. Issues that are so obvious to me at face value, like wearing a mask in a pandemic or kneeling to show support for anti-racism are ferociously contested. I mean, wow, so when I needed to miss French open press conferences to take care of myself mentally, I should have been prepared for what unfolded. And see, I can understand this to a point because before I was a conservative, before I walked away, I was dealing with false narratives and I was trying to take those and reconcile them against what I really believed to be true, which was a biblical framework. And it was difficult, it was driving me nuts. And so I can see how people who have false ideas can see this. She says here that kneeling to show support for anti-racism. That's not what it is. That's what you're told. That's why the left always chooses the words the way they want to choose them. Black lives matter because they, who's going to be against that? They use those terms to funnel in the Marxist agenda below it because on the surface, they market it one way, but it's a bait and switch with a totally different agenda on the other end of it. And that's why there's such a civil war going on between families and churches and societies and our country because of these fake platitudes that have other meanings that people who understand those other meanings realize, hey, that's not right. Oh, you're racist. No, that's not what I'm talking about. See, it's they're arguing two different things. And that's why Naomi Osaka and LeBron James, these people, they get caught up in all this because they don't understand, because they don't fully grasp what's going on at the biggest level. So this video has been kind of deep. I understand that and I hope that makes sense. Please comment below and let me know what you think about this. I'm open to hearing where I am wrong on this. I think I'm on a right path here, but I must say I haven't fully extrapolated all my ideas yet. I might do a live stream to kind of talk about it more, but let me know in the comments below what your thoughts about this. What your thoughts about Naomi Osaka being eliminated by the Olympics in Japan, her home country. And by the way, she lit the torch for her country. This is kind of a big deal from a sports standpoint and from a woke standpoint to me it's important because you can see how people are misled and manipulated by false narratives and act on those false narratives which cause horrendous and embarrassing situations let me know in the comments below i'd be curious to know what you think and if you like what we do on this channel we take pop culture and politics and filter to you in a conservative manner in other words filter to you right then please hit the like and subscribe button and that bell icon so you don't miss any future content and also, there's a join button there that you can click to find out how to support this channel. Please do that. And if you enjoy the other videos on this channel, we have some picked up for you right here.